Today we're gonna coat lots with Mr. Kim, Phil Potts, and oh, how amazing you'll be. Well, good morning and uh, welcome. Clinton Rocksmith coming in with a, a subscription for three months or three months in a row. Thank you, Clinton. Are you in Bali? Fantastic. Hello from Bali. Welcome. Hi, Bali. Hi, Onyx Jr. Welcome. And uh, Lachlan there as well. So uh, welcome, everyone. So uh, it's Friday. So that means it's time for a Xamarin UI challenge. Hopefully uh, all my audio is okay. I've had a bit of trouble with my audio recently. So um, let me know if there's any issues. Clinton. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In Bali. Definitely in Bali. Wonderful. All right, let me uh, let me put a little bit of music on and let's catch up with where we're at to with our current solution. So uh, what we're working on is we're working on this UI here. So this was a thousand bits from Clinton. Oh my goodness. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I gotta I gotta write this down, Clinton. A whole bunch of unicorns. <laughs> Thank you so much, Clinton. Let's uh, let's put in some thanks for Clinton here. Thousand biddies and subscribing for three months. Awesome. Thanks, Clinton. Very much appreciate it. All right. Um, now, what we're we talking about, we're talking about uh, what we're going to do. So uh, we're pretty much looking at this UI. We started this one last week. Uh, got some of the basic screen layouts and the view models and things in play. Um, for those of you who are interested in the GitHub link, uh, it's going to be something like Kim Philpot slash Iceland Moss. It's a weird name. No, it's not called that. What's it called? It is called Iceland Moss. Maybe I just can't spell Iceland. All right, beautiful. So there's the uh, there's the GitHub link. <laughs> Where are my sick emotes? I know, I know. I need to. Uh, hi, James. Need to set that up, don't I? I'm I'm a Slack streamer. Get on it. All right. Well, I'll probably hit you up, James, and uh, and you can teach me the way of of amazing emotes. That would be cool. <laughs> All right. So the the, uh, the challenge is Iceland Moss, uh, which is at a, a Dribble design as usual. Going through Dribble. This is somebody something that somebody sent to me and said, "Hey, can you go and do this?" Five at a start. Yeah, James. I you know last time I watched your stream, I I was super impressed with the production qualities, and so uh, I think we're in this this constant. Um, <laughs> push for each other to uh, improve our stream quality, but uh, awesome. Okay, so let's have a look at this um, in a little bit more detail because it, you know, at first when the person first sent it to me, I thought, oh yeah, look, this is an easy one. But it actually turns out that there's a lot of complexity going in here. Um, so let's have a look at it. So first of all, you know, we've got a, a staggered layout here. We've got that working already. When the user scrolls, it's going to slide this up here. Okay, so it's uh, it's basically sliding up the, the content as we do it. Um, and then it gets a little bit more interesting when somebody goes and selects an item. Alareza, sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Welcome. And then once they select an item, something flies from a staggered layout up to the top and then expands out. So that's going to be special how we achieve that. Um, so that'll be interesting. And then once that happens, it goes and slides up a panel at the bottom. We've done all this sort of stuff before, so that shouldn't be too hard. And then there's also an add to cart. Okay, so there's a few elements that we've done before that will contribute to this. Hey, Dave Kaufman. Welcome. Your first time? Wonderful. Well, thanks for joining us. Saw my post on Twitter. Oh, well, there you go. It's worth tweeting out. So uh, just, Dave, what we're doing, or what we do on a Friday, um, is we basically take a design from Dribbble, and then we try and reproduce it in Xamarin Forms. So 
at the moment. Um, we're trying to reproduce this one. So we had a little go of this in the last stream. Let's see where we're up to. We kind of got the basics going and I might just do a quick review of how it's laid out as well. So let me uh, spin this puppy up. Hi right, Clinton, you're doing some testing on the media plugin for Exif data. Yeah, so I saw that tweet from you, uh, Clinton, had a little bit of a discussion on, on, uh, on Twitter about that. And uh, apparently iOS 13 does some stuff with Exif data. So um, I'm sure James will appreciate a pull request in there. And James, I imagine you're super busy with, uh, what have we got, Ignite coming up. Alrighty. So what have we got here at the moment? We've got this layout here. It kind of uh, pretty much looks like what we're after. Um, there's a few things that we want to fix, you know, like get rid of this underline under the search. We've got our staggered layout. Oh, James. Just finished your eight hour workshop. Amazing. And presenting it on Sunday. Fantastic, James. I'm going to have to have a look at that later on. All right, uh, so, you know, we've got our staggered layout going on here. That's all very cool. Um, so the way this is all structured at the moment, right, is normally, is that a, no, James, this is not a collection view. Um, what this is, let's have a look at some code, hey. What this actually is, is just a, let me open up my page here. It's actually a flex layout sitting inside a scroll view. <laughs> Foddy. <laughs> flexi. So it's basically a flexi. Um, one thing I would like to do coming up is actually, uh, I saw that there was somewhere, if we have a look at staggered layout, Xamarin forms, collection view there is actually an issue here um, for staggered layouts so this hasn't been done yet um, so it's still open so uh, I think that would be a really really nice addition to collection view because there's so many staggered layouts that are around at the moment so uh, need to do that all right um, yeah I hope they do that as well because it would just save a lot of time. Um, Foddy, don't don't get scared by Foddy, James. Foddy's okay if you've got like a super, like I, I use it here because my view model is super duper simple. Yeah, I know, you're already scared. So we basically just got, you know, a, a basic view model, which has nothing much in it. And then we've got a main view model, which has a collection of our data. Okay, so um, that's all I'm using. But you will be pleased to know, James, that uh, I am using your MVVM helpers. So there you go. So it's not all bad. Now have a look at, uh, let's have a look at this page. Okay. I've opted here for using an absolute layout. Now, normally I use grids for everything. Um, the reason that I've gone for an absolute layout is I just know by looking at this design, I'm gonna have to have some very, very specific positioning of things. You know, and I've got to do this sort of stuff and I've got to uh, do this animation as it goes up here. So that's going to be really difficult to do with grid. So, you know, in this case, I, I want to have very explicit control over positions and pretty much that's, that's what's absolute, absolute bouts uh, been uh, designed for. So you're thinking a hidden view that you animate up and out. You know what, James? I think that's exactly right. Um, so you're thinking a hidden view that animates up and out. That's pretty much the approach I think as well, right? So I think what we'll do is when the user taps on this, we'll actually have another view, which is the same control or whichever one is selected, positioned at the same point, and then animate that up into here over top of everything and then out. So yeah, 
Very much so. That's that's kind of my assumption here as well. We actually did something very, very similar in the past with with this puppy here, Unzone. So with this one, when we tap on an item, um, yeah, it basically made the same sort of looking row pop up. And the way we did that was actually, yeah, exactly. Just create the same thing over top, fade out the background and then put it in. So that's a, a another UI challenge that we did in the past. Uh, and just buy the contents. Hey, Dave Kaufman, a follower. You've just joined in for the first time and followed. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, hang on, hang on. I try, I'm trying to keep track of, uh, of, of all of this. So, let me just put that in there. Okay, so, so what do I want to do today? Um, so this one will probably take a little while. I think the first thing I want to do, um, or, or what I want to achieve today, is first of all, when the user starts scrolling, animate these elements, right? So if we have a look at what elements animate here, um, basically this comes up, this element here comes up as well. This background border here uh, also animates up here as well. This thing becomes hidden. This thing slides up. So there's, there's actually a lot of stuff going on um, when they scroll. So the way that we'll probably achieve that um, is again, something that we've done in the past is we've used a sort of state machine for animation. So what I'm hoping to do is create effectively two states. <laughs> Just see there's a tweet. Now, if you tweet me, it appears up in the top of my, my screen up there. So uh, this should be awesome. Well, let's, let's see. I'm not promising any miracles here. So that's what we're trying to do. Um, now, in the past, what we've done is we've had a state uh, state machine, which basically just has two animate or you know however many animation states you want. So I'm thinking we'll have an animation state of where our UI or, or our search is expanded, and then we'll have another one which is when our search is collapsed, and we'll basically tell it where things need to be. So because we're doing an absolute layout, we have to be pretty explicit, um, which is something I don't really like about absolute layouts. That's the way we kind of got to go. So first of all, uh, at the moment, things are very hard coded about where they're positioned. So it's not going to handle screen resizing very well. So I want to fix that up. Then I want to animate the elements between the states as the user scrolls the list, which we just talked about. And I want to do a little proof of concept um, to see whether I can get that working. Travi Dale. Hey, how you doing? Got to do that Halloween thing. Yeah, we did the Halloween thing last night, actually. We don't, we're not big in Halloween in Australia, but, um, you know, it's kind of an excuse for the kids to get a whole bunch of candy. So, uh, so we went and did that as well. All right. So that's the, uh, that's kind of the three things I want to achieve today. So let's talk about screen sizes, first of all, and, and positioning things, because we can see here, things are very explicitly set about where they're going to be. Um, and even to the point of, if we have a look at, uh, say our basket icon up here, this is actually, um, you know, sort of hard coded in its position. So we don't want to do that because of course on a different form factor, it's going to appear in the wrong place. So this we're going to need to do through a little bit of code to actually position it in the right spot. So we'll start off there, I think, get everything positioned nicely and then we'll create a couple of states. All right, let's let's uh, let's go and have a look at that then. And this is not gonna be very, very attractive code really. Um, so we haven't got any code in our page yet. Hey, President, not sure, welcome. Halloween night has just started, fantastic. All right, so um, I wanna know what the page size is. So um, what I can do, because I need to know how, how big things are going to be. Is there like Zam animations that can be used at all? 
maybe. Maybe. Um, I haven't played around with that. Well, you know what I might do? I might just sort of code it out first of all. Um, and then we can have a look at examinations. I, th I think it's going to be too complex, actually. But I'm going to try and not make it overly complex. So I think what, what I normally do, the way I normally code these things is, is just get it working and then sort of go back over it and work out what I can do. So I'm going to override on appearing. On appearing is, uh, is when my page appears. Um, I need to know the size. At this point, I think my size is, my width and height is going to be zero. Um, and we possibly want to chat, what we want to handle. Um, we want to chat, we want to basically check when the, when the page changes size, which could be on like a rotation or something like that. Um, so I'm going to hook up to like the size changed event. Let's see. Let's do that. I'm going to override I'm disappearing and I should probably get rid of that as well. Let's do that. So uh, a couple of questions there in the chat window. Thoughts on cancelling animation. My thoughts on cancelling animations is that you should always be able to do it. Um, if you have a look at all the, um, the Apple stuff, in fact, there was a really good presentation at one of the Apple conferences where they talked about animations and they said, yeah, things should be able to be cancelable. Um, and the cool thing is if you use like a, a storyboard type of thing or, or custom animations, uh, there is a way of actually cancelling that as well. Uh, also for the size of the screen, could you just use essentials to get the current? So when you get the current size of the screen, you get it in pixels. Isn't that right? Or, or the device. What do you get it in? Because all I, all I really need to know is like, you know, this dot width. But also density. All right, uh, so we can override on size allocated. Well, we can try that. Do you want to try that? Should we try on size allocated? Anyone got a view on the right way of doing this? Let's have a look at this. Let's see what we get. So we get width and our height. I don't want screen size. That's right. Hey, R2, are you? I haven't set up your, uh, your, your jingle. This is one of those things I want to, I want to do. <laughs> Australians be up. That's exactly right. Hang on a second. Uh, let me. This is one of my favorite samples. It's R2, so you can't argue with it. It's R2, so you can't argue with him. Okay. Um, let's try this. Let's just try on our eyes on size allocated. Let's see what we get. Let me get rid of this for a moment then. I would normally do it that way, but you know, if Oz size allocated uh, works for us, we'll try that. Okay, so what we want to do here then um, is <laughs> I can't argue with you. What I want to do is uh, is basically work out the size, right, of of things, and and this is where it's going to get a little bit nasty, right, because what I need to do is I need to set the layout or set the position of all the screen elements. Okay, so for example, um, the, the, the shopping cart. Okay, so I might say I got a rectangle. And as always, if you've got other ways of doing it, let me know. 
So I might say, hey, this is a new rectangle. And what I want to do is I want to basically say um, something like the exposition of this is going to be the width of the screen minus our button width. Right, so I might add a... So the button widths are 48 in this particular design. Um, I could do this. I could say uh, minus the... Do we have a... We don't have a name for this, so let's give it a name. Let's call it basket icon. So we'll say basket... I'm not sure this is going to have a width at the moment. Plus our, a margin, right? So we're just trying to inset it from the from the left. Um, so we'll put in 20, for example. Uh, our Y position, we'll just put it at the margin. Um, our width, we'll make that our... Um, basket icon dot width and our height Oops, I don't do equals all right and then what we're going to do is we want to use because we're doing an absolute layout we'll say absolute layout dot set layout bounds for the basket icon to be this rectangle. Let's see if that works, first of all. So all it should be doing is should just be sending the basket inset 20 from the right. <laughs> ATR Dopey, Doppy. Welcome. Um, R2AU, your meadow kit arrived yesterday. I'm about to get soldering, which is something I definitely know heaps about and I'm looking forward to doing perfectly. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that you're using sarcasm there. Um, I actually have one as well. Hang on a second. All right, check this out. Oh, I'm, I think I'm in, in reverse mode. This is a this is a meadow. This is an IoT uh, device from Wilderness Labs. So I got the uh, this hack kit. I got heaps of different things in here. Um, so I'm planning on doing some IoT stuff. Uh, so it basically allows me to deploy .NET to uh, to the device. Um, but unfortunately, mine arrived without the breadboards or the headers. So I can't solder them on yet. And even if I did have them, I have no idea how to solder. So I, I tell you what, R2, you should stream. Yeah, so that's all right. The good people at Wilderness Labs are sending me a new one. So uh, or a new, the, the bits that are missing. Um, so R2, let me know how you go. Give me some tips. Okay, what do we got? We've got our basket icon appearing in the right spot. Okay, and it actually moves across here as well. Okay, so cool. Our on-size allocated totally works. Beautiful. All right, so that's a lot of work to um, to just get that in play, but unfortunately using an absolute layout, that's pretty much what we got to do. All right, so what do we want to do next? Let's go and position some of these other elements in, inside of this page. So we've got a basket icon. A hamburger icon is probably okay. It's always going to sit in the top left. Just do it. Just do it. Okay, we got a search icon. Uh, we better give this a name. So we'll say search icon. Okay. Um, so let's go and position that bad boy. And I think I'm gonna, like I'm going to do this initially just to get things in in play. Um, OK, 
Okay, so we say our search rect, its width, um, uh, sorry, its X position, if we have a look at our design is, uh, it's probably just along there. It's probably at 20. It's probably the inset here. And we've got our settings, cool. So we'll just put this in at, at the margin. Uh, the Y position of this bad boy is going to be, um, let's have a look at it. We've got it at 200 at the moment. Let's just leave it there. Let's just say it's at 200. save that page so let's go back there let's set our search icon to be our search rec so this is yeah this is really boring code to write but it's probably pretty important what i'll have to do is i have to put this into some states a little bit later on which will be a bit more fun uh, so let's put our settings icon same deal it's got to be a nice way of doing this by the way We'll say settings rect. Give this a name. Oh, gotta save that or it won't create my field. So we say settings rect. Settings icon width and height. Settings icon should be. settings rect beautiful and this is going to have the same sort of positioning as this one here so it's going to be the settings icon width plus the margin offset from the screen let's see if they're in the right position If only I uh, had hot reload for my code here, I wouldn't have to run it each time. Okay, so, yep, they look about right. And I'm gonna have to adjust this one here. Okay. <laughs> if only that were possible. That is the downfall. You're right, James. That is the downfall of not doing it in, in XAML. Um, you are right. Yeah, look, I mean, look how look how fast this deployment is to, to Android now. Of course, now it'll take longer. It's actually pretty quick. Not too bad, not too bad. Non-debug is uh, is faster, yeah. All right, um, let's get this, uh, let's get this. Let's position this thing here, this, uh, this background bit. So this is this box view here. So if you're testing, just do it without debug. Yeah, it's a, it's a good idea, James. I like it. All right. Okay. So this is going to be at 200. The width of this, or the position of this, is is actually just going to be the margin, right? Because it's going to be at, at 20, I believe. That should be right. 
at 200. The width of this is going to be, let's say the, the width of the page. Um, minus the settings icon. I really like doing this, but anyway. Um, that makes sense. Now, what would be nice is if you set up states in XAML and then animations inside of those states to play back. Yeah, I don't think we have a, a, a library yeah, for that. I don't think it's possible at the moment, James. Um, but it really feels like something that we, we need to do. Um, all right, let's just see if this is right. Uh, sometimes Oops, things don't it's not work. Gonna work. But I am going to use I am going to use states of a of a sort. And um, in regards to not sure whether it's possible, you know anything's possible with enough code, right, James? Okay, that. Um... <laughs> President not sure called you out, James. Nothing is impossible. That's your thing. Okay. Um, technically, anything's possible. So that didn't work very well for us, did it? I basically put it there. Why did it do that? The setting icons bounds left. Actually, that's probably going to be zero, isn't it? Let's see if this helps. Uh, settings plus the margin. All right, R2, get that soldering equipment. James, I assume you're looking at Zam, Zam animations. That didn't work very well for us at all. Three forty-three. Uh, okay, so I'm, I'm doing this wrong. What am I doing? I'm saying the width. Actually, it really wants to be. Today we're going to code lots with Mr. Kim Phil Potts and oh, how amazing. <laughs> Here's your problem. Oh, Boots Malone. Cool name. Welcome. And thanks for the follow. So James, why not a stack layout? I'll tell you why not a stack layout. The reason not a stack layout, <laughs> tell me, is because if we have a look at what we need to do with this, you watch, you watch here. Uh, it might be a little bit hard to see, but watch this bit here. This bit here, and this bit, and this bit, right? But not this bit, are gonna to animate to different positions, right? So it'd be kind of all right where they, you know, to lay that out, sure, you could do it, you could do it that way, but you watch what happens to these, all of those bits start flying in all sorts of direction. You know what I mean? So, um, so I don't think a stack layout's gonna roll that way. Okay, um, 
So the width is going to be the margin plus, no. Why do I suck so much at maths? Um, settings icon bound X should give me that, right? And the width of this wants to be from there all the way to here minus the margin. going to give it to me let's have a look so does that make sense james why a stack loud isn't going to do it and why i'm doing this horrible code so the width is minus the margin minus the margin minus the margin yeah pretty much there we are so minus the margin plus the margin. <laughs> I think that's it. <laughs> yeah, this is why I don't use absolute layouts because they're just, they're just, they're just painful. I don't think it's the minus the margin. There we are. See, that's about right, hey? And yeah, I will turn off rotation because this is never designed to work with rotations, but there we go. It's sizing. Looks like butter. <laughs> Beautiful. And um, probably that should change as well. There we go. All right. Uh, actually, there's one last thing we've got to do as well which is this flex layout down the bottom. Or actually this scroll layout. Sweet Lord. Um, I think you could put the entry inside the frame and then it would resize when the parent resizes. But you know, there's the reason I'm not doing that, James, because um, you're absolutely right. But the problem here is this search element and its container actually work independently. You watch this. See here? That search stayed there. Its container rectangle went up this way <laughs> so that's the thing with this with this design it's actually um i could improve eight that um yeah All right, you'd shrink the search down and then move it over. Maybe, maybe. Let's 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 just try try this first, um, and then we'll, we'll do that as a refactoring. Um, because kind of what we're trying to do here is we're trying to replicate what's in the design. Um, yeah, I'd love you bugging me as well. Hey, dragon, welcome. So the Y position of this puppy is going to be, say, for example, the uh, search icon top bounds dot bottom, maybe, bottom. Plus the margin. And in 
fact, the width of it is going to be the width minus two times the margin. The height of this is going to be the height of the page minus this here. God, I, I hate doing this. Um, what's this called? Our scroll container. And let's see what we get. All right. Looks about right. So it goes right down to the bottom of the page, which it wasn't doing before. If I rotate this, it's still going to look rubbish. But at least I'm going to have to work on the positioning of this, but at least it's sort of just taken up that space. So it's in the right position. I'm actually going to disable rotation anyway. Cool. Okay, so I've got my elements where they need to be. Ah, uh, Dragon, you have finished the uh, trick-or-treating. Hopefully um, you had a fun time. All exhausted, yeah. We, we did it yesterday because I'm from the future. Okay. Um, so let's talk about animating these things now. Right? So what we want to do is we want to have two states. We want to have the state where we're like this. So the search is expanded. And then we want to have another state which is when the search is contracted. Today we're gonna code lots with Mr. Kim, Phil, Potts, and oh, Thank you very much for the follow. Oh, and also, uh, so that was uh, J. Charlie Garcim. I'm probably slaughtering that name. My apologies. And Hitman. With Mr. Kim, Phil, Hitman Potts, Hayden. <laughs> So, uh, Hitman Hayden, you're, uh, you're just picked up Xamarin as uh, the company needs mobile. Didn't realize you can do things like that. You can do some pretty amazing stuff. Pretty amazing stuff. Um, I'll just do a quick, quick shout out to, um, let me just put my blog here for a second. Um, so what I, I like, I like playing around with UIs. And so um, I sort of blog about some of these things that, that we do. So doing layouts like this, um, you know, and I sort of talk through how we might how we might do that. So uh, have a look at my my blog for there. Um, I've got to keep writing those um, because another place you can go is to my GitHub repo. And in my GitHub repo, there's there's a whole bunch of of different designs done with with Xamarin forms. So like, you know, crazy. I really like this one. This is this is a pretty crazy animation. It took a lot of work to do that. Um, so if you want to if you want to have a look at some um, some code around the place, have a look at the GitHub or um, Hitman Hayden, hit me up for any questions. I'm always happy to uh, to answer questions. All right, back here. Where are we? I'm going to get this animating. Uh, and I also put out all of the uh, previous streams to my YouTube channel as well. Look, while I'm... I think it's users control buttons. No, that doesn't look right. Yeah, look, James, there is so much I got to do. So here's uh, here's where I go through previous streams, um, building different UIs. Um, but that's why I like to do the write-ups because nobody wants to sit through like six hours of me talking rubbish. Caleb Diaz, maybe? Hey, your first stream on Twitch. Love the content on YouTube as well. Sorry for the possibly long message. Any tips or resources for a younger dev junior in college but working at a startup part-time as a Xamarin developer? 
trying to balance everything and increase my knowledge as a software developer. Much love. Beautiful. Okay. Um, yeah. So, so James is on the, on, on the chat here. So, okay. Here's my recommendation. Um, go and check out, um, James, James streams as well. He does amazing stuff. He's, he's spamming out some links here, which is cool because these are really, really good, uh, resources to have a look at. Merge conflict. <laughs> That's all James. James, um, yeah, anyone who, anyone who's into Xamarin just follows the hell out of James, which is a good thing because he gives so much good content. I think you missed something, James. Um, I heard you talk about Xamarin stuff as well. Um, if we go to docs.microsoft.com slash learn. Yep, Microsoft Learn. Um, and we come in here. I should know how to... So this is actually the place that I work. Um, so I should actually know where this is. But if we come in here and we do a little search for Xamarin as well. Okay. We used to have a thing called Xamarin University. Um, we basically moved uh, a lot of the content over here. So definitely I'd recommend checking. Uh, James, you already, <laughs> you already got it there. Yeah, I, I do. I need to update my... Uh, I need to need to update my stream deck uh, and get some how about you you got me you're botting me <laughs> let's get rid of all this code okay uh, I think we're in a position now where we can start doing some animations right um, so again so I'm a little bit a little bit all over the place today um, so I want to move all these things now we can write animations, um, you know, just sort of smash it out in, in actual animations themselves. But if you've got something like this, where you've got a couple of states, right? So we've got the expanded state, we've got the contracted state. Um, something we did in a previous stream was we actually, and this comes from a Xamarin blog, actually. Let's have a look at the Xamarin blog. Uh, Xamarin blog um, animation state. All right, so there was this blog a long, long time ago. Um, oh, I don't know, it was, it was a year ago. Um, and this is really cool because what it talks about is, you know what, um, if, yeah, so Hitman Hayden, um, the docs are, the docs for, for Xamarin and actually just docs in general now is amazing. But this, um, what this, blog post was about was um, creating states and allowing us to transition between them. And so it's one, one of, in Xamarin Forms, we have the Visual State Manager, which allows us to set up states. But the problem with the Visual State Manager in Xamarin is it's nowhere near as cool as the one uh, in other XAML platforms. So it doesn't support animation between states, but that's exactly what that article is about. Now, I, uh, at some point, went and stole that code and adjusted it. Um, so somewhere we did that in a previous one. I'm going to just go steal the code again. Do, do, do. Um, so many repos. I think it was in the fancy hamburger. Okay, storyboard. Okay. I'm just gonna steal all of this code, right? So all of this code is really doing is is allowing us to create a state engine and then put states in it and then tell it to transition between the states. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna bring that in here. I really should put it into a, a NuGet or something. There's so many things I should do. So it looks a little bit crazy. Um, it's actually not that bad. It's got a, a, a dictionary of state transitions, right? And then we can go to a particular state. I'm just gonna have to add some usings in here. 
put in link, put in task, put in a bit of Xamarin forms. Okay, and I think we're good. Beautiful. Okay, so now what I can do is I can create myself a state engine. I can set the locations that each element should be in, and then I can go to state. Okay, so what do I want to do here? Let's have a look. So I'm going to create a storyboard and that's just what it's called. You could call it animation state engine or something, but grab myself a new storyboard here. Okay. In my on size allocated. So I'm still going to have to work out all of the, the, the bounds, but I can add them to the state engine. So, um, should be able to do something like this storyboard dot add right a state so I need to I need to have some states defined um, that are appropriate for me so my states are probably going to be something like um, the search is expanded or the search is contracted uh, I'll just put this up here for the moment It doesn't matter. It just needs to be an enum. Uh, so we'll say search expanded. And we'll have search hidden. All right. And then what I can do with this storyboard is I can say, add a state, a transition for a, let's say my States of expanded and then I can add a view transition and a new view transition which is basically saying what is my target element what sort of animation does it have to get there what's its end value in there and then some easings and things like that in there so effectively what I want to do then is for each of these, I want to do something like say, okay, we'll add this rectangle in here. Uh, so we'll say a new view transition. My target element, let's say a basket icon, for example. I have an animation type of layout and we've got an override here, which takes a rectangle. Okay, so let's let's just try this out first. Basket rect, see if this is gonna work for us. Because part of what I do here is I just play around and just, uh, and just see whether I can get it running. Okay, so basket rect. doing here what am I missing uh, what are you complaining about um, takes an animation type Layout basket wrecked. Feels about right. What's going on? What's this error? Can I convert from a view transition to a view transition array? Oh, I know why. Because I've got to give it the states, all the 
all the different things for this state. So this would be uh, an array. of these. All right, so that's one thing that's gonna happen in this state, for example. And let's just play with this for a second. And we'll add in a state, for the same thing for when the search is hidden. And so we'll say the basket icon. So this is going to have a different rect um, because this is where the rect is going to be. Actually, the basket stays where it is. So actually, I don't need to do anything with the basket. So that's that's wrong. Let's do let's do this settings icon. Right. So it starts out there and then it moves up to there. So let's get this code down here for a moment. So that's our setting rect. Um, and then we're going to have a setting rect collapsed as well. I just want to see if this is going to work for us. So in this one, the width is going to be the, the width minus well, actually, let's just say it's going to be the basket icon dot left minus a margin plus the width of the settings button. The Y is going to be the margin width not changing so it's going to be our it's going to be this here all right so effectively when we're expanded we want it to go to the settings rect when it's collapsed we want to go to the settings rect collapsed Okay, cool. Let's try this out. Let's just hook this up to something. Um, let's hook it up to the hamburger button for the moment. So hopefully what I can do now is I can do something like say storyboard dot go to a particular state, right? Um, so in this case here, I probably need to know the state so I can toggle between them. Um, so I'll have a, a variable here for the current state. Uh, so we'll say this is states dot search expanded and then we'll basically say uh, if our current state equals states.search expanded then we have a new state here I'll tidy this code up in a moment And we basically just want to say our new state then is equal to search hidden. Otherwise, our new state equals 
right, something like that. And then we want to go to the new state. Um, we want to update our current state equal the new state. All right, let's see if that works. Uh, sometimes things don't work. Uh, president, not sure. Settings icon width and height there or basket icon. Um, did I screw something up? Copy paste. Uh, so this one is getting the the location of the basket icon. So that's all right, I think. Let's try it out. So this is a lot of code. Okay, we've added a state multiple times. <laughs> yeah, that's true, real apps. So I've added a state multiple times. How did I do that? Oh, I think this is what you were talking about. Beautiful. Search hidden, allowed animation. What about the width and the height for the rectangle constructor using basket on climb? Looks like a copy paste error. You know, I would never do a copy paste. Shame. 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 So what about the width and the height for the rectangle constructor using the basket icon? Settings icon. Yeah, settings icon. Before we do this, let's do this. Let's go and create a new storyboard each time. Line 68 and 69. Cool. Thanks. 68 and 69. So this is setting the settings rect. So this is saying, um, so the basket icon is sitting here, right? It's basically saying the setting is rect collect is going to be the basket icon bounds left, which is there, minus the margin, minus the setting icon width. So it's basically saying put it here. So I think that's right. Today we're going to code lots with Mr. Kim Phil Potts and oh, how amazing you'll be. PQ Pimento. Sorry, I, I destroyed that. But um, thanks for the follow and welcome. Yeah, I'm kind of sort of trying to uh, get it so that they're positioning them relative. I feel like there could be a whole helper library written around this. Wow, state search expanded already added. Okay, what am I doing? Doing something bad. breakpoint here for a second.
Okay, so the storyboard currently has, has no states. Then we come back here again. have a look at what it contains in its states dictionary. So I have search expanded, search hidden. How many times is on size allocated get called? Anyone know that? A lot. Well, let's have a look. Let's let's count the ways. I think in on appearing things aren't laid out yet, are they? That's actually why I did that thing earlier on. Yeah, I don't think it's allocated at that point. So it comes through here once, twice. Three times. Wow. Four times. Yeah, that's not gonna that's not gonna roll. Okay. Let's see. So maybe put a bull in it. Right. Well, we could do that. That is the question. Yeah. Um, I just don't like recalculating all this stuff based on these. It should just be the final place. So the way I've done it in the past is just to do it in the on allocating, hook up to the size changed. And that seems to work. How about we do this? I already do so much um, bad stuff. <laughs> Why don't you try not write bad code? Let's let's just move this here. Uh, override on disappearing. And here we'll say um, when the size changes. This is the way I've done it in the past. So we'll, we'll start here and then we'll add ourselves an, a, a note. Hey, Glenn Stevens. Today we're gonna code lots with Mr. Kim, Phil Potts, and oh, how amazing you'll be. For those of you who are wondering, that jingle is actually written by Glenn Stevens.
I just feel so dirty with all of this. this in a bit here. <laughs> James, why just change one line of code when I could like make 16 changed? 16 changes. <laughs> oh God. Okay, so that's a that's a reason why. Yeah. Okay, James, James is right. Fix it. Okay, 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 I'm, I'm happy. Call me out. Yeah, I don't, I don't have, I, I, I need to work that out. Um, I need to put that behind a, a command. Even hot reload, every. <laughs> All right. Is that what you want? That make you happy? This is how real coding's done. <laughs> well, this is how my coding's done. <laughs> Terrible. We'll get there though, we'll get there. Oh, are we already there? That's super cute code. So, theoretically, <gasps> look at that. I press this button, I change my state. That. Look at that. That was a lot of code to move something. But. <laughs> Wait, I got a victory. All right. So now all I got to do is put in the states. James, you just. Um, you're just making me depressed now for how much I neglect my stream by the fact I don't have any of those. <laughs> All right. So, um, so I just got to do the same thing, right? I got to move that one up there. I got to move that across there. <laughs> same bits. Thank you, James. That's my victory dance. All right, let's move that across there. Let's move that up there. Bit jingle. Oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna copy all of those down. Today we're gonna code lots. We'll <laughs> you finally found a command, James. <laughs> and uh, BJ Acumant, Acumart, welcome and thanks for the follow. We're, uh, we're just having some fun, just teasing me about the quality of my code. So, um, we added these view transitions in. Um, all right, so we need to add view transitions in for other things as well. Now the question is, should I move this code down the bottom and then add them all at the same time? Given that this takes an array of transitions, I think we do. So 
state machine. Okay, so we're then gonna have a view transition for that. We're gonna have a new view transition for our search icon. Animation type layout um, to our search. Can I have them bouncy? I can have them bouncy, yeah, um, absolutely. So uh, when you add in a view transition, I could say, do it over a certain length of time. And I could say, easing bouncy. Yeah, so absolutely, that would work as well. Let me just, let me just uh, before I get distracted, because I'm easily distracted, and easily break my code. Let me do this. Uh, okay. Uh, the animation had a bit of acceleration to it. I think we probably want to do like a cubic in out or a a scene in out, sign in out. Uh, so let's have a look. What have we got? We got our search rect. That's our search icon. We're going to have our search background. It's going to be a search background rect. Um, okay. Is that all of them? Uh, the Let's have a look at our video. Let's see what we're trying to do. We're trying to move. What elements move? Uh, so that moves up there. That moves up there. This thing moves up behind that one. Crikey's. Um, so we got one, two, three elements moving. So we will go and add in view transitions for the search icon, the search background. But we need to have the collapsed version of them search rec collapse which we don't have yet but we'll put those in man this is this is nasty code nasty nasty Settings icon, setting icons collapsed, search background. I could probably put this into um into like a dictionary. Hey, thanks for the follow, Andrews Healy, maybe? Welcome. So this is going to go to, okay, so now we need to work out where, where our button's going to go. It's going to be very similar to this one, actually. So I'm going to copy paste. Shame. 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 And this is going to go to the basket icon bounds left. Oh my God, what am I even doing here? Search background, basket icon, minus the margin. That's the setting of icon. 
And this wants to be the same width and height actually as Brachy search background collapsed wrecked. I feel some refactoring coming on. Ah, oh, another follow. TR Dopey? Doopy? Welcome. And thank you for the follow. Um, what am I even doing? This is my search. Right, so I need to have this, the search wrecked collapsed, which is going to be similar to my settings. Oh my God. I am, I promise I'm going to tidy this up. kind of thing I really wish I did uh, off stream so you didn't see how bad I code let's just see what sort of state I'm in here of uh, went to the right place except they all went to the same place so I need to obviously my search icon is going to where the settings is so we want to move that across but then it's pretty much right okay let's do that let's fix that first and then we'll do the hiding of other things so the search background wants to go from minus the crackies settings icon dot width plus a margin plus Let's see if that's the right place. All right. Yeah. Oh, um, TR Dopey, 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 you tell me how to say it. Is it possible to do an Instagram picture wall in Xamarin? I mean, by that video with animated thumbnails and stuff. Yeah. It certainly is. Uh, let me see if I can find you something. So what, what's, what's the best media element around at the moment? Is it, is it called... Xamarin Forms Media Plugin. Is this the best one around? Who did one the other day? 
Um, Media Manager plugin. Yeah, this one by uh, Martin. Where's the GitHub repo? I think this one's pre pretty hot, probably. Um, supports lots of ones. I'd have a look there. I actually don't do a lot of stuff with video. So um, that's my guess. But if anyone else in the chat knows, um, yeah, go check that out. So the search background location is right. So that is actually the same place that we want to add our search icon, um, which is this bad boy here. All right, let's just do one final test here. See what we have. And I think that'll put things moving in the right place. Oh, I keep waiting for that. Okay. There we go. That's what we're after. Okay, so um, not sure if that's easy or hard to see, but um, we're basically moving that icon up there. Imagon. Imagon, maybe? Thank you for the follow. And welcome. We're just doing a bit of Xamarin Forms stuff, a little bit of animation. Okay, cool. So that's that's now well, on that state change is moving those to where they need to be. So if we look at our, our video here, we're moving those elements in between those two states. Cool. Um, what else do we need to do? As that happens, we also want this and that little search to fade out as well. And of course, this thing to move up. Okay, cool. So let's, the opacity one should be pretty easy. So let's do that one first of all. We'll make sure we have some names behind our elements. Let's their search background. There's our entry field. That's actually our entry field. We're gonna to wanna to hide that bad boy. All that search entry um, and also we've got this here which is where our text is Let's give that a name so we'll call this uh, header yeah I think there's I, I think there is now um, TR Dopey there's there's actually a uh, some good libraries around uh, media and actually, let me have a look here. So, thought I saw something here with animations the other day. Oh, oh, yeah. It's um, hit, the, hit the translate button on this one. Just having a look at which one he uses here. Anyway, have a look at this one or have a look at, um, yeah, James's Handsome Informs. Because that one's, that one's pretty cool. Okay, what were we doing? We were putting some states in now for... Uh, so we, have, we want to view transition. We want to say that our header has an animation type of opacity. So when the search is expanded, this is going to have a value of one. Cool. And 
we're also going to have another view transition which says that our what do we call it search entry animation type dot opacity is going to have a value of one so that's the values it's going to have when the search is expanded but when the search is not expanded those two are going to become transparent so we're going to have an opacity of zero and with and that's the advantage of using like the the storyboard is i can just put that in one place and then i can say hey go to that state Wow, that didn't work at all. What happened there? Why is that resetting? Mm. in order. Ah, thanks, James, for that link. Today we're gonna cope lots with Mr. Kim Phil Potts and Paul. And welcome Teak27. Thanks for joining us. Just struggling here a little bit with animations. Why is that state changing back? Look here. With these two and see whether that is what's breaking us. Fine there. When I set the opacity, it seems to break it. It's 
Today we're gonna code lots with Mr. Kim Phil <laughs> An unexpected <laughs> error. <laughs> Welcome. Why do you do that? Why do you do that? Let's have a look at what the opacity is actually doing to the header. Let's just check where a header is a stack layer. That's all. A search entry is a search. Nothing crazy going on there. transitions, goes and selects them all, waits for them all to run. Okay. Let's slow that down and see what happens. Let's do this. Let's come back to our main page. Let's add an animation speed in here. And we'll say take a, a second. And then I'm just going to add the animation speed in here. all of these just to slow it down a bit I wonder whether because we're doing a layout too something's causing a redraw James says I see your problem says a lot of underscore in those names <laughs> That could be the problem. Could just be bad code. Let's see what happens here. Why do you go back there? Why do you do that? Well, that's what I'm thinking, James. Is the size changing? Well, I don't think I don't think I saw that. Let's well, yeah, let's have a look. Let's have a look. You're right. I think I breakpointed that a little earlier. I put a breakpoint there. Changing state. No. Nah. I'm wondering, let me, let me try something here. That's really interesting that that's happening. Let's try this. Let's just grab one of them, like our, um,
<laughs> Let's get our setting, our, our search background. No. I just finished AI Somnium Fast. What does that even mean? What does that mean, R2? Oh, a game. Oh, cool. It's got me, it's got me flummoxed. This. It's like it's setting all of the bounds back to what they were before. I'm just going to try something here. So we're going to new state. I wonder if... basically going and getting our states. Run all the tasks. Let's have a look at the view transition for an opacity. If it's build it visible. Okay. Thanks, James. You've got faith in me. Beautiful. Hopefully it goes all right. So take care. See you next time. <laughs> this monkey's got to fly. <laughs> Beautiful. Take care. I'm going to try something else here. I'm going to see whether it's because it becomes invisible and that creates a redraw. So if I don't actually make it disappear, let's see what happens. This is the, this is the fun of UI development. Interesting. So that's pretty much what we're after, right? Okay, cool. So that's interesting. That means that there's something a little bit interesting. When an element changes visibility, 
it seems to cause an absolute layout to reevaluate its bounds. Okay, that's cool. We'll have a look at that one. Okay, let's um, let's do this one next. Let's say when we're in that state, let's move that up. So that is the state of the scroll container when it's expanded. So this would be our scroll container animation type of layout. Okay, cool. And then we want state for when the search is hidden, which would be a scroll, scroll container direct collapsed. Let's try that. Okay, and that's going to be same margin, same width, different height. So this is going to be, uh, say, the margin plus the height of the basket, which is what we're kind of using for lots of things. So we'll say basket icon dot height plus another margin. And then this would be the height minus all of that stuff. Do, do, do. Let's see if it works. So that's pretty much what it's doing. It's a little bit weird when you watch it in slow-mo. So it's moving that up. Yeah, like that. And then when it comes back down. Okay, that's pretty much what it's doing. Oh, that's good. I'll call a victory on that one. Okay, so theoretically speaking, then, what we should be able to do is instead of triggering it from there, let's trigger it when the user starts to scroll. So how would we do this? We would, realistically, we just got to change our animation speed to something a bit more reasonable. Um, actually, we'll make it 250. And why don't we say when the user scrolls, Why don't we invert the state here? Now, the question is, I suppose, probably, if I look at this design, what I'm guessing would happen here is the user starts to scroll, it goes up there. The question is, what would it do when the user scrolls back down? Would it eventually um, pull it back down? Probably. Or they click this button and that brings the search information back down.
let's try this first of all. Let's just say if they're scrolled and if the scroll position is scroll Y is greater than zero and our current state is not equal to search hidden. Let's throw in loads of brackets here because the more brackets, the more likely it is to work. Then we'll say storyboard go to state search hidden and we'll update our current state. You want to put more brackets in? I can do that for you, President. <laughs> Let's see if this works. Bracketception. <laughs> That's exactly right. So if I scroll that, oh, there we go. I got no way of expanding it. Oh, bummer. Okay. Um, oh, there we are. So if I scroll upwards, beautiful. Scroll upwards. Um, now, I suppose we make a decision here. Put one in the chat if you want to see it when we go back to the top, it scrolls down. Put two in the chat if you want it to just do it based on this button. One. Okay. So when it when it hits zero and we're not expanded. Okay, cool. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. So uh Otherwise, then, if our, I'm going to put so many brackets in here. <laughs> if our scroll Y is equal to zero. <laughs> and our current state is not equal to states.expanded. Then we'll go to the state of search expanded. And let's see if that works. I wonder if scroll Y goes to negative. It probably does. It probably does. Anyway, we'll find out. Okay, so I scroll up. Oh, oh, that's not good. Bad things happen then. All right, so what are we saying? Um, is there tea time in Australia? What do you mean by tea time? Like dinner time? Hold it down, creates this weirdness. <laughs> Guess not. <laughs> 
Ah, tea time at 4 p.m. That's a nice little uh, little tradition. Uh, I suppose we, we have afternoon tea. We call it afternoon tea sometimes. So what's happening here? You have it in Iran? Afternoon tea? I gotta say, it sounds very civilized. Gotta remember Australia. We're not very civilized in Australia. <laughs> now, why if I drag? Frozen zero, go to hidden. So Caleb, could be a terrible idea. There's probably not, but let's have a look. I doubt it's a terrible idea. Could be a terrible idea, but could you keep track of the current scroll Y? And if the user scrolls up, then compare the current against the scroll. And if it's less, then trigger the expand. So you mean whenever you scroll up? Let me see if I understand here. So keep hold of the scroll Y. When we scroll up, compare the current against that and if it's less trigger it. Oh, I said, yeah, but it doesn't on the way down too. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have a look at, I'm going to output the scroll Y. Let's do this. Let's put a debug here. This is my favorite thing to do with debug, by the way, is put an action and then say, and just keep the code executing. So, so I don't have to write debug.write lines. So current scroll equals e dot scroll y something like that and then i should be able to see that value okay so that's all that's all good now it's only when we're in this transitional space. It's going from zero to values and then back to zero. I think it's only if it's during that transition period. Almost like I want to wait for this to finish. And if it's transitioning, then like I'm going to try something really. Oh, sorry. My emulator's cut off. My apologies. Do you want to see some horrible code? Let's try some horrible code. Um, there's two ways we could fix this, right? We could say... Wow. Okay, so here's going here's gonna to be some really terrible code. Make this an async void. I'm 
I'm going to turn off scrolling. Let's just, let's just see if this is going to fix the problem. So basically I disable it while it's animating. Wow. Is that the worst code you've seen all day? Actually, I've had some pretty bad code today. Yeah, I think that's, that's the trick. Because we're getting scroll events whilst it's animating. So let's not do that then. Let's just. What do you think? I reckon that's all right. It feels okay as a user. I'd want to try it on a mobile device and actually just test it. Okay, I, I think that's okay. I think that's okay. I'm gonna create. Can we, uh, the question is, can we say if the scroll view in the list of Moss scroll to 1.5, for example, execute that animation? So do you mean if we're past a certain distance in scrolling? Is that what you mean? We, we could, yeah. I mean, we could just do it based on on this, but the problem is that that still wouldn't work for a flick. Like, if you flicked it... But then again... You know what I'm going to do? Um, because I've probably got about another about another 40 minutes or so um, before I've got to go and do some other things. But I'm just thinking to myself, why don't we leave this for the moment? I'll Today we're gonna play around with it a little bit more. XU Hume? XU Home? Thank you. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. What I'd like to try out for the end of uh, the stream. All right, so we've handled our screen size. We're... Further investigation into the scrolling. Maybe as... We can... Perhaps only transition when the scroll is beyond a certain bounce. All right. So let's um let's 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 park this one because it's it, it kind of works at the moment. Um, I just it's probably just going to require a little bit more playing. What I really want to test out is I want to test out whether. <laughs> Because the next part's going to be really tough. Because uh, the next part that we want to have a look at is what happens when a user taps on one. Right? Because we kind of like move it up here and then expand it out. Right? So what we're actually doing is we're, we're taking an element from within this scroll view, right? And moving it. Um, so James mentioned earlier on. Uh, and it's what I've done before, is what I'll basically do is 
when we're at this point here, I will um, create another element over top and then transition. So I just want to see if I can get that, just that first little bit there working before the end of the stream. Because that will put me in a position where I can then start working on this next page in the next stream. All right. So hopefully, hopefully that's cool. I'm just thinking what this is doing. It's actually, that element's disappearing from there. That's cool. Okay. Let's, let's try this. Um, so what I want to do, what I think I want to do here actually is actually let's, let's, let's just do this for a moment. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in, um, an element here, right? So let, let, just to just to see if I can get this positioning correct. And um, I'm just gonna add a box view in, just called animation test. It doesn't really matter about the layout bounds at the moment. We'll set that. We'll set the background to, to red. We'll set an opacity. to like 0.5 so we can see what it's doing. Doesn't really matter about corner radius. And then what I'm gonna do is if the user taps on this, uh, let's just do this for the moment. What I want to do is I want to see whether I can get the bounds for it, essentially. All right. The user is tapped on an element. Um, and it's a pancake view. Let's get its bounds. So let's work out where it is. And then we'll use our absolute layout to set the layout bounds of the animation test object to that rectangle. Okay, so we're gonna overlay um, that element essentially is kind of what we're what we're trying to do. But that's actually not going to be quite right because we need to consider the scroll bounds as well. Um, so we want to say uh, for example Get our scroll container dot scroll y value All right um, and then our rectangle is going to be uh, effectively the scroll container position um, 
should probably just be the pancake. I'm going to rename that from pancake. I'm going to call this the, the element. The element bounds left or X. Okay, let's try that. The Y position um, is going to be um, the scroll container position plus its Y position um, plus the elements position. Hi, Drooper. Drew, Drew Cooper. Next semester is going to be rough. <laughs> All semesters are rough. <laughs> my position is just this minus my scroll. Okay, so we're trying to adjust that. Um, the width is going to be just the width of the element. The, the height. Wow, that's a lot of subjects, Drew. Let's get rid of some brackets. We don't need brackets. I think also what we need to do is this is not just going to be the bounds of, of that. It's probably going to be a container X plus, I think I can just say element X. Let's do that. Okay, so what we're doing is we're creating an element um, and then we're going to set the bounds on it. So we're going to say, did we do that down here? I think we did. So if this works, what it should do is it should put like a like a square over top of the element that we click on. So Drew, um, rather be implementing trees than trying to convert code to assembly. Yeah. You know, the thing with assembly is it's super easy. It's not many instructions. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, so apart from the scroll there, don't worry about that. When I, oh, hang on. So that's overlaying an element on top of that. That's cool. So theoretically, what I could do then, that seems to be calculating the position okay. Let's scroll down here. Yeah, that seems all right. So why don't we do this? Why don't we actually <laughs> compilers class? Compilers are fun. All right. Um, maybe we should create an element below it. Uh, well, okay. What we what we could do here is we could just say, okay, well, let's just see what happens then if we were to do, for example, um, sorry, I sync this. So let's go and get our element dot layout to <laughs> I 
interpreters for the win. <laughs> So a destination wrecked here. So a destination wreck would be like. So what I want to do is I want to get that element. I want to expand it out. So I'll say destination wrecked equals a new rectangle. So many rectangles today. Um, the exposition will say is going to be the size of this element. Oh, sorry, the size of the page minus the width of our element divided by two. That should center that element. We'll set our Y to be this dot. say it's going to be doesn't really matter we'll just put it in somewhere from the top our width is going to be equal to the element dot width and this will be equal to the height will be equal to the element dot height okay Oops. What I do here? Nest rect equals this. Need a comma in there. Need to be able to spell element. God, I need to be able to use C sharp syntax as well. So what happens if I said lay this out to the destination rect animation speed um let's do oh. Easing sin in out. Okay. Um, so what I'm doing, this should animate it to the sort of the top center of the screen. And then what I could do is I could say, well, let then go and lay it out to um, the size of the page. So this dot bounds. Uh, inflate that up a little bit by say, 50. So inflate just uh, makes a rectangle bigger, just so as it covers the whole thing. And we'll say easing dot sin in out. All right. So what I'm hoping this will do for us is we click on it, click on that. The red square should go from the position of the element that we clicked go to the top and then expand to the page. <laughs> that is not what happened. In fact, I have no idea what just happened. All right. That was special. Let's have a look. Let's see if we can work this out. So the question there, how about a shared transition? I thought about this and I don't think it's going to work, right? Because see this, the, the, the page it's transitioning to is actually itself, right? It's just an overlay. Mm. 
you see like because typically what would happen with a shared transition is like here at this point where we're doing the transition you would have another page in the background here so i don't think it's going to work i could try What's happening here? Scroll Y zero. Yep, cool. This is the rectangle of the element. Yep. We set our bounds of that to go over top of it. We work out our destination rectangle. Oh, I know why. Because I'm animating the actual element itself, which is not what I want to do. Um, what I want to animate is our, uh, what was our fake object called? Animation test. That's what we're trying to do. Okay. Um, and the other thing I'm, I'm going to do Let's see if this works. In fact, yeah, let's just see if this works first of all. Now I can't click on it. Ooh. Try it one more time. So I click this one. Okay. It was basically doing what it needs to do. Um, but let me just, destination rec wasn't correct. So this dot width divided by two. Yeah. Divided by two. Okay, cool. Um, let's just test this out times times two. I'm going to slow this animation down a little bit here. And hopefully we'll get what we need. And then if this works, instead of just putting this like red square over the top, let's see if I click here, Ah, beautiful. Okay, so that's pretty much what we want it to do, but we want it to do it with one of those um, one of those tiles instead. So, can we download and use Ready XAML templates? Yeah, cool. Um, There's a couple of places that you can you can do this. Um, there's two places that I know of. One is Sync Fusion. So what's cool about Sync Fusion is that so they have they have some templates set up that you can use. Um, and they've actually got quite a few nice ones in there. Um, there we are. Uh, is this the one? Yeah, 
yeah so this one here um you can use so this would in this this is so sort of like tied to sync fusion controls so have a look at that one the other one that is around is called grail ui kit um but this one's kind of a little bit more expensive but they're they're super fancy Syncfusion banned in Iran. Man, that sucks. Um, all right. <laughs> Maybe these guys haven't banned Iran. God, that's terrible. So give that, give, give, they're the two that I know about anyway. All right, um, so I think we're okay now with this, um, with this layout here. Man, this is a challenging UI challenge. That's pretty much doing what we want, cool. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm, instead of just using a, a box view, let's go and create a control Let's, let's create a duplicate of one of these things, one of these um, these things that we have here, and we'll use that instead. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand, extend, extract that into a control. Let's collect controls. And I'm going to add in a new Xamarin Forms content view and I'm going to call this um, like our product display item or our product let's call it product display and then I'm pretty much going to steal all of this code here and put it in here right so I'm just extracting it out into a into another class Except I broke something. What did I break? I need pancake view. I need the pancake view reference. Um, all right, what else did I break down here? Content view. Beautiful. Um, this will still keep it bound. So that's cool. So now what I should be able to do is should be able to come back here and I should be able to say in my main page now, let's go and use that. So I create myself a namespace to my controls. And then Our data template. We'll put our controls. Controls. Product display. Cool. And that helps tidy up our XAML as well. Um, I will need to get rid of this tapped event handler because that's not going to work anymore. Just tidy up a few things here. Okay, so the gesture recognized there. The other thing that we do in here is we set the height request in here. So we won't do that in here anymore. We'll do it in here. From that it's probably okay let's see if that still works for us
Oops, hang on a second. I see your question there, um, Caleb Diaz. Static, uh, I'll get to it in just a second. Static resource not found for the key. Oh, okay. Um, we might have to move some of these resources up to the global level. So I think I'll do that. Let's do this. Um, Sometimes things don't work. Oops, hang on a second. Oh, we don't have converters. Uh, we need that namespace. <laughs> so rare. <laughs> There's actually quite a few people doing uh, Xamarin work on on Twitch, actually. So like James Montemagno is doing it. Uh, David Orta now as well. Okay, what's failing now? Object reference not sent to an instance of an object. Ah, that's because I'm using a pancake view down here. So you know what I could do? So the problem there, I got an exception because I was trying to cast the element to a pancake view, but it's not anymore. It's its own control. So why don't I just cast it as a view? Yeah, so so here's, uh, here's a couple of ones. I, I don't have a shout out command. But um, people to look at on Twitch, especially, um, is, is is David Ortenau and James Montemagno. Those guys do some awesome, awesome streams. Cool. <laughs> You're probably f fiving wrong. <laughs> Okay, now back to this question. Curious question. Is a lot of this more time and experience? I feel like I'm trying to cram years of experience and time and stressing myself um, of you should be able to do this and I'm just starting off in your dev path. Yeah, look. Um, yeah, developments, you know, development is a lot about um, banging your head against the wall, right? Um, so, so it's really hard to learn coding concepts and also learn frameworks and things at the same time but I think the thing is just be easy on yourself um Caleb Diaz because um because it does take time and you know like uh, I'll spend hours sometimes sometimes I'll spend hours just banging my head against some really small problem that just turns out to be you know a typo or something like that um so that's kind of just the nature of development, I think. So, so yeah. Don't feel you should be able to do things implicitly. Things, Some things are hard. I don't know. I don't know if that's helpful. Okay. Let's... Um, just, just before I sign off, let's just swap this to be using this stupid red circle. And let's add... A different control in. So what I want to do here, we'll get rid of this, and instead we'll say let's put a. What do we call it? Uh, controls, product display. Um, we'll call this like a. Uh, highlighter. Let's just call this highlighter for the moment. We'll get rid of the background color, we'll get rid of the corner radius and the opacity, all of that sort of stuff. Um, we probably want to start this off being not visible. I 
Okay, so what this is going to be is this going to be, well, let's just call this a fake product. Sell, maybe. And while we're at it, okay, so we're going to fake product sell. Today we're going to code lots with Mr. Kim Phil Potts and oh, how hey, uh, you'll be. Gigi Fura? Furia? Sorry about the pronunciation. Um, Nick. He says, I've been doing this for 20 plus years and still feel the same as you sometimes. Just hang in there and keep at it. Yeah, that's really, really good advice, Nick. It just, you know, imposter syndrome um, is real in IT as well. You know, I, I constantly feel I can't do things. <laughs> it's probably because I can't, but you know. All right, cool. So we rename this thing. Um, so what I want to do then is I want to say, okay, when somebody taps on this element, right, um, we'll do the same sort of thing, but we'll, we'll, we'll extract a little bit of this code out, right? We're doing a lot of stuff in here. Um, so instead what we'll do is we will uh, create a method on it, okay? Um, so the first thing we want to do, we come in here, let's set the binding context. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, what was our cell called? What do we call it? The, fake product cell. We'll say fake product cell binding context so we're going to get it to be the same binding context so it should have the same data okay uh, and then we'll go ahead and we'll set the layout to the same position okay so that's where we're gonna basically work out this stuff here We're going to position that thing in the right place. Then we're going to make it visible. Um, let's just go fake product cell dot is visible equals true. And then we want to do all of this stuff. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say let's just see what happens when we do this. Fake product sell. Now it's going to want to do a lot of things inside of here. So I'm going to actually do this. I'm going to say fake product sell. I'm going to expert I'm going to create a method called like expand to fill the bounds. Right, so bound, expand it to fill the bounds of the page. Okay, and I'm going to create this method. So this is going to be a method within within here. Okay, so that way, what we can do is we can do all of our various animation stuff inside the actual cell itself. Um, so we'll say expand to fill bounds. We'll say the background. So what we want to do is we want to control some of these elements, right? What we're, what we're trying to do here, what I'm, what I'm trying to get my head around is when this start scrolling up here you see how some of these elements become transparent we probably want to do that but for the moment um, why don't we just grab that bit of code we had earlier on so this stuff here
and then put this inside of here. So I say, okay, we'll go out to this bounds. Uh, so this is, uh, we want this to be an async method. And we'll say we want this to lay out to here. get our destination wrecked. So we'll try and keep all of this code internal to this. Can you create a small game with Xamarin? Yeah, absolutely. width divided by two and we'll set ourselves an animation speed sorry I'm kind of rushing through this just because I want to see if I can get it done before I finish I got to finish in about 10 minutes um See if this works. What I'm hoping we'll have now is when I click on one of these cells, it should expand up, should move up and out. Wow, that didn't work at all. Why didn't that work? So I want that to be visible. works out the destination wrecked. What is it actually doing there? I feel like it's not got the right background color or something. The binding. Oh, wait on, wait on, wait on, wait on. We're setting the binding context to be the element. That's not actually what we want. We want the binding context of that element. That would explain it. You live in a different world. All right, let's see what happens here. My goodness. almost what we're after okay so let's do this um yeah 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 that's that's nice <laughs> it's uh <laughs> let's do a few other things um so let's make it so that if uh i can get rid of that okay so that would that would be cool because then i can actually do it more than once uh so we'll add a tap just to recognize it to this bad boy
And all we'll do is we'll, for the moment, let's just hide it. Okay, so um, just so that I can, I can actually, you know, do it more than once effectively. Uh, so let's say the, uh, we'll cast the sender as a view. And then we'll set it is visible to false. Okay, cool. And once we've done that, we'll make it so when the cell expands, just like in the in the video here, it hides these other elements or fades them out. Okay, here we go. Comes up, stands out. Beautiful. Like that. Let's try this one. Great. All right, well, I think we're in the right path here. So, um, let's do this. Let's say... Let's I tell you what we do want to do. Um, well actually, let's get let's get rid of the the content inside of that cell first of all. So inside of here, what I want to do is is basically give each of those elements a name if they don't already have them. We're going to box view um, up the top here. That box view is our background behind our add button. And we're going to fade all of these things out. So this is our add background. Um, this here is our, like an add button. This here is our, uh, like our, our labels, I suppose. Um, so this is our name label. This down here is our price label. I think that's all the elements we want to get rid of. And then back in our code behind yeah um let's basically just say let's animate these um animate these these out so we'll create an animation here uh so we'll just say uh, add background fade to zero Mis misspelled borrow <laughs> can you borrow my brain you can always borrow my brain can't guarantee it's um it's useful but yeah yeah if you've got a question feel free to ask away Okay, so we want to uh, we want to fade out these elements, right? We want to say the add background. We had the add button, um, and I'm going to do this over half the duration of the animation. We had the price label, and we had the name label. Price label. Oh, hang on, just a second. Let me just. Bear with me for one. Sorry, and we're back. Okay. Um, 
I'm gonna have to go pretty soon. Okay, so we've got these elements here. Um, we're gonna fade these. Um, first of all, we actually, if we're gonna fade them, we need to set the initial state of them as well. All right, so the initial state of them is gonna be at add background. Um, that is actually only a 50% opacity, right? Because that's the little bit that overlays the corner. So I'll say that equals 0.5. Um, these other ones, add button. It's going to be equal to one. Not opacity. Equal to one. And our price label. So what we're doing is, is um, whenever it expands, we're going to start from these initial values and then we're going to fade them down for half of the animation speed. Okay, and um, and basically we go on and lay these out. Cool. And let's see what result we get out of that. That's pretty, that's, that's getting there. It's getting there. Okay, let's have a look at what this does. This one clicks on one, fades that out, comes up, goes full screen. Okay, getting there. Oh, I tell you what we don't do. Let's try this. Let's have a look at this. See how it moves that item? So this item here, it came from here. So it's actually setting that, um, it's making that no longer visible. Let's just do that first of all. So what we could do here is back in our main page, before we do the expand, why don't we do this? Why don't we say um, our element that we clicked on, hide the cell we clicked on. And then when this is finished, we display it. <laughs> MJ freelancing, good eh? Did you miss much? Uh, you missed me writing a whole bunch of bad code. Um, we, I, I'll show you what we're... Um, so, because this is in a flex layout, right? So if I hide an element in a flex layout, everything else is going to reposition. So here's a little trick for you. You can set the opacity so low that it effectively is invisible right and then once the animation's finished we can set it back to one you watch this this will be amazing all right so mj freelancing what we're what we're doing is we're we're uh, we're doing this this little part of the animation here when the user, so today, what we did, it's been a little bit slow going, but we're kind of getting there, right? So the first thing we did is when the user scrolls the list, we make it transition up like that. So when I, oh, when I scroll up, it transitions. What we're working on now is we're working on just doing a proof of concept to see whether we can achieve that sort of effect where this element flies up out of here. And I think we're pretty close. 
So let's say I select a red one here. Yes. Animation's too slow, of course. <laughs> Something really bad happened. <laughs> what happened? Moss. Reindeer moss. The moss you never knew you wanted. I'm going to up these animation speeds a little bit here. And then I'm going to have to sign off, I think. So how long does it take? How long does it take for something to expand in this video? Let's say about... Let's say about, uh, about one second. How long is this taking? Let's have a look. Okay, too long is the answer. Um, I reckon it should be somewhere more in the realms of, I don't know, 500, three, let's, let's try 400. <laughs> Love the Scandinavian moss. A uh, quarter of a second, third of a second. Uh, so 1,000 is one second. So this is 0.4 of a second. Ooh, that didn't work well. Something to fix with this. Oh, I'm scrolling. I gotta fix that scroll up. You'd say a little faster? Yeah, I'd say a little faster as well. All right. So um, I'm gonna have to sign off. Um, I'm a little bit over time. But look, I think we made some good progress today. Um, I think next time, uh, actually, next, speaking of next time, uh, next Friday, I'm going to be busy. So I was thinking about doing um, doing Thursday, perhaps. Yeah, that's better. Um, cool. So I think we, oh, okay, let's have a look. Um, so we need to have a look at scrolling um and that's sort of tied up with that that works mostly i'm just not quite happy with it proof of concept when the user selects an item yep um oh seeker player how you doing thank you for the raid how was how was everything with yours Doing well. What have you? What have you been? Uh, what have you been streaming on? So, for those of you who don't know, Seeker Player is also part of the Live Coders. Node, my SQL. Beautiful. Well, you know, you've actually picked us at a really awkward time, Seeker Player. I really love the raid, but I was actually just about to raid myself. Um, but look, just for those of you who, who joined in, thanks for, you know, thanks for, for uh, coming over. Um, let me tell you what I do. <laughs> right? And then, and then we'll, we'll do another raid and we'll send you somewhere else. So maybe, hey, Seeker Player, 
Do you want to go and find somebody else to raid? Um, and then in a moment, once I've, I've told people what I do here, we can go and raid there. <laughs> I know it sounds funny, but yeah. Okay, so this is what I do. I, I uh, on, on Fridays, I, um, I basically uh, take UI challenges, which means I go and have a look at designs on Dribbble. Uh, so here's an example of a design over on the, uh, oh, that we're basically reproducing in Xamarin form. So we're doing it in a cross-platform mobile development language. Um, and so basically I'm just sort of building out this, um, this UI. Okay, so um, sort of getting that ready. So we're, we're kind of just at the moment where we're starting to uh, fix a few bugs, getting that scrolling happening. And then when I select an element, um, it's sort of popping out and then going over. And so in the next um, in the next stream, we'll start having a look at that. I was just tidying up what we need to do when you raided. <laughs> okay, so um, so Lana Lux, should we go and uh, stream? Uh, go and raid Lana. Um, Let's let's do that. She is pretty awesome. She does um, she does game development. So uh, let's let's go and raid her um, now. Also, I just want to say to um, to people who've been hanging around, uh, thanks so much for for joining us. Um, I was just mentioning that next week uh, I will probably have to uh, catch you on Thursday instead of Friday. So I'm in Australia, so it's Friday for me. So maybe Wednesday for other people. Um, otherwise. Uh, thanks, got lots of great follows today, um, met lots of new friends, I really, really appreciate it. Alright, so um, have a great weekend everyone, take care, I'm going to start this raid, go and say hi to Lana, thanks Alariza, I probably pronounced that wrong as well, so do let me know. Let's go say hi, and um, I'm going to say bye for now.